Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 disappointing deaths of great movie characters. For this list, we're looking at the big screen deaths that simply disappointed us after such a great showing from these characters. First, we're gonna seal off this To be featured, the characters must be loved by many, but suffered a death that left us wanting more. The worse the death, the more disappointed we get, and for obvious reasons, we have to issue a spoiler alert here. Number 10, Saruman, The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. This night, the land will be stained with the blood of Rohan! Let's go back in time to 2003 and remember the epic conclusion to the famous fantasy trilogy. So you have come here for information? I have some for you. You guys remember when one of its top antagonists was killed off, right? No, of course you don't, because the scene was cut from the theatrical release and was only shown in the extended cut. Your life will be spared. Save your pity and your mercy! I have no use for it! Well, for those who have seen the White Wizard get axed, you can tell that you certainly didn't miss much. A stabbing by his own servant Grima and a long fall are all that you get here, if you even got it at all. Number 9. Darth Maul, Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Teaser trailers and pixelated MPEG files littered screens in 1999 with only the black and red face of a new Sith Lord to keep us at bay. There's no denying the awesome look of Darth Maul and the terror of his wonderful dual lightsaber. With Ray Park playing a brand new villain for a brand new trilogy in The Phantom Menace, we could only imagine the battles that we might have. Oh no, wait, he's gone. After taking on two Jedi and killing Obi-Wan's mentor, Maul suddenly becomes ineffective, randomly raining sparks down on Obi-Wan whom he positioned to hang on for dear life, thus allowing his foe to recover and slice him as he just stood there dumbfounded. Weak! So much for the high ground being an advantage. Number 8, Llewellyn Moss, No Country for Old Men. After getting himself involved in a drug deal, Llewellyn Moss finds himself on constant guard from the tenacious Anton Chigurh. Are you going to shoot me? That depends. A film with more in common with the Terminator than a typical western, the two characters in question have a series of near misses and powerful confrontations. But what about their final showdown? If I don't come back, you tell mother I love her. Well, we don't see it. All we get is the lifeless, bloody body of the Vietnam War vet with no context of how Anton got to him. And we never find out either. Thanks, Coen brothers. Thanks. Number 7, Vincent Vega, Pulp Fiction. And you know what they call a, a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? Clearly an ensemble cast movie, but after spending the better part of an hour solely with John Travolta, we think it's fair to start placing bets on who our favorite character might be. Making the biggest impression in the film, Vincent Vega was not the most friendly of men to Butch, but we were hoping that wouldn't come back to bite him. Sadly, it does, and within seconds, our star is gone without a single word in his goodbye. It just goes to show that no matter how important to the plot you might be, you can still get robbed on your death scene. Number 6, Joe Brody, Godzilla. Sandra! After starring as Walter White on TV, Brian Cranston was the king of the world alongside the meth industry, so why would you axe him out of your film in its first half? 
whatever it takes. Frequent teasers and trailers led fans to believe that the small screen chemistry teacher was the star attraction, alongside his co-star Godzilla. But what we got was sadly much different. Delivering a fantastic performance as he goes along, Joe Brody succumbs to injuries in a helicopter after he was harmed while trying to escape the monster before things in the movie can really get going. Cranston put on a brilliant performance, and the film is now remembered for his early death being a missed opportunity. We're losing him. Joe, can you hear me? He's going at AFib. Give me another epi, one milligram. Number five, Scott Summers slash Cyclops, X-Men, The Last Stand. This film promised an epic fight with mutants of all shapes and sizes, including those who need to wear cool sunglasses all the time. Jean? Scott? But the one-eyed mutant is axed in act number one after being killed by his resurrected girlfriend within minutes, with no chance to even complete his story. How? It's reported that James Marsden didn't mind having a smaller role in this third X-Men installment, but personally, we could have done with a little more Cyclops. Number 4, Captain James T. Kirk, Star Trek Generations. He's the famous Starfleet captain that brought together generations of fans, so perhaps he might find his end on the bridge of a starship, or gracefully through old age with a twinkle in his eye. Ah, uh, no. How about getting crushed by a rusty bridge instead? And make a difference. Oh yes, we made a difference. The prestige and legacy of William Shatner as Kirk is ingrained into everyone's minds, as Generations was his seventh Star Trek film appearance, but also his last. At least I could do. With the captain of the Enterprise. So after fighting Klingons on a dying planet and going back in time, it's a simple bridge that finishes him off. Number three, Bane, The Dark Knight Rises. The Mask of the Moon. Bane. Not even Gotham's Reckoning can get out of a cheap death. What are you? I'm Gotham's Reckoning. After destroying the Dark Knight himself and sending him into a pit for months on end, fans and audience expected and wanted a fantastic final showdown between the two titans of DC. <laughs> oh, you bunny! <laughs> What we got was a stab in the back, or gut in this case by Talia al Ghul, who has a disappointing death all her own. But how shall Bane overcome the odds? Well, he won't, because Catwoman either drives into Bane or shoots him or something happens. Literally, blink and you miss it. This death had fans leaving the theater genuinely confused about whether or not Bane was actually dead. About the whole no guns thing. I'm not sure I feel as strongly about it as you do. Number two, Hicks, Newt, and Bishop, Alien 3. Well, what about Bishop? Bishop? The droid that crashed with me. Within minutes of the opening titles making their appearance, three of the four survivors from the last Alien movie are snapped up before our eyes. Fire in, cryo in, After narrowly avoiding the perils of aliens, a facehugger begins its attack on the remaining survivors. Naturally, they escape, right? Except they don't, and are left for dead and buried before the audience can find their seats. Of course, it would have been difficult to explain why Newt was six years older all of a sudden, but that still isn't an excuse for this. What the actual hell? How are you feeling? My legs hurt. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Please. Please! <laughs> Sarah Connor was cremated in Mexico. Her friends scattered her ashes in the sea. They stored these weapons in accordance with her will. Number one, Boba Fett, Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi. No disintegration. As you wish. 
everyone's favorite stoic and silent bounty hunter deserved far, far better than this. You may take Captain Solo to Jabba the Hutt after I have Skywalker. He's no good to me dead. His rustic aesthetic is only a highlight on top of his cool attitude, as Boba Fett associates himself with whoever pays best rather than any specific moral code. He's all yours, bounty hunter. But it's all ruined when Han Solo accidentally whacks Boba Fett in his back and sends him rocketing to be eaten by the Sarlacc, turning the vicious bounty hunter into a cartoon character. <laughs> The loudest piece of dialogue he ever has is a wimpy shriek as he's digested over several thousand years. For shame. So, do you agree with our list? It was... <laughs> Which big screen characters do you think deserved a better death? You are terminated. For more non-disappointing top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I'ma call a couple of hard pipe-hitting to go to work on the homes here with a pair of pliers and a blowtorch.